This race at New York Auto Ring brings with it the appearance of the new Super Speedway package that was announced by PCC Cup President John Kowalski. He was quoted as saying, The fans want this because the ratings were highest for Talladega, where this was first tested, so we're going to give them more of it. Um, doesn't really seem like the best idea because Damon Jones topped the practice charts at about 253 miles per hour, roughly, and... The reserve drivers for some of the teams have been told to be on standby for after this race. So we're going to have to see what happens here. Also of note, Ryan Lemberg, Ashby III, and Trey McKay were disqualified after finishing first and fourth in the qualifier because they, while they were going through post-race inspection, the officials had found a mixture of rocket fuel and nitrous in their engine tank, as well as traction control on their cars, and right as they found that, the ball bearings fell out of the B posts. Uh, the officials laughed at them, and I don't think we're going to be seeing them anytime soon. Qualifying was set by owner points, so your pole sitter is John Kirkpatrick and the number 41 for JK Racing. And what is that? Regardless of what he's driving right now, he gets a good start with Ian Elias pushing him. I think that might be why he got such a good start, because now Claire Ossier comes flying by on the outside, and John Kirkpatrick is very slow. That car just... What's going on with that car? Are those duct tape numbers? Well... He's definitely really slow, as you can see here, and uh, probably should not have started on the pole. Here's Frank Azzaretto, and he is running in about 30th or so. It's th his first start ever, and right in front of him is Bobby Dollar, and also back there is Greg Maddox making his first start of the season. Frank Azzaretto is doing a pretty decent job. He's uh, running about 30th place, and Cody Deek is leading by lap 5. Here he is, and he is having a pretty decent season so far. He's running in about the top 15. He's been cranking out good runs behind the scenes. You haven't really seen him much on camera because he's kind of been a midfield driver. John Kirkpatrick, by lap 5, has lost the main pack. No surprise there, but he also dragged back Lewis Jones in the 58. And you see there that he's just way behind everybody else. He's trying to hang on. Lap 7 and Barry Juveno leads the field. It is pronounced Juveno, not Juveno, as I've incorrectly pronounced it, as he harshly reminded me last week. Clara Kindle on the bottom makes a move for the lead, being pushed by Sam Brown and the two Paloma cars of Brian Gallagher and Lenny Jacobs, as Clara Kindle will take the lead. Barry Juveno is shuffled back. Oh, there I go again saying Juveno. John Bracci in the back has lost the main pack by lap 8. Tough break for him and his Australian Motorsports teammate Lewis Jones, who's right behind him. Bobby Dollar is moved into the top 15. His season has consistently improved since Atlanta, where he finished four laps down in the qualifier. He's been slowly making up ground, and props to him for getting into the top 15. By lap 13, four more cars are about to lose the draft. John Jefferson, Barton Sandy, Chester Benson, and the championship provisional user this week, Andy Lambert. All these cars are just about to lose the draft. They're just kind of sniffing off of Pete Maverick there, who's running right in front of them. Clara Kindall continues to lead on lap 15. Brian Gallagher and Ian Elias are right behind him. Gallagher is looking to challenge for the lead, and so is Elias. Elias is making a uh, good bid for the championship this year. He's got two top fives already. Here you see Brian Gallagher. He shoots to the inside with some drafting help from Chris Benson. Bobby Dollar has moved his way up into the top five. Clara Kindle challenged last week for the win, but a suspension failure took her out late in the going. Tom Delgado, we gave him the moniker International Racing Superstar last year at Charlotte. That was kind of true, but here he's not quite running like an International Racing Superstar. He told us not to call him that, but we're going to do it anyways. He's battling for 20th right now with Gabriel Apollo, but he is doing a decent job considering he started way in the back. John Kirkpatrick going a lap down on lap 18. This car, I'm surprised he hasn't been parked yet. And you see here the jam up that he's causing on the outside. And a bunch of people reportedly gave him the middle finger 
and you see the stack up here? Well, it caused caution one on lap 19. Frank Gazzaro looking for a way around John Kirkpatrick, and he gets turned into the inside wall by Josh Marshall. A huge hit for the 64 car and the 18. Both cars slammed into the inside wall at about 245 miles per hour. We have no idea on either driver's condition after that. We're riding on board Josh Marshall, and there goes the camera on that car as he slides down the track. That was just a brutal hit for both drivers in the driver's side door. Once again, we have no word on either driver's medical condition as we get one final view there. As you see, Azaretto and Marshall just slam into the inside wall. The race would go under a 15 minute red flag to get those cars cleaned up. Under caution, I guess Gabriela Apollo wasn't too happy with how Ike Durbin was treating her, and she turns him into the wall. Ike Durbin goes out under caution as the drivers are making their way into the pits, and Lenny Jacobs blows up under caution as well. Tough break for the 52 team, although it might have been good that they actually retired because these cars have been flying around this track. Cameron Taylor manages to benefit from getting off pit road first, and he leads the field to the green flag. Cameron Taylor and his Winslot Motorsports team have actually managed to get both cars into the field this week. Greg Maddox is running a bit further back. John Kirkpatrick continues to be a moving chicane as always. Stuck on the high side luckily. This time as everybody just flies past him. Ryan Jeffries is being held up a little bit along with Ben Worthington and he decides to block the low lane for some reason. Ian Elias getting a good push from Sam Brown up into the lead around Cameron Taylor there, who is back to third. Caution two on lap 27. Ben Worthington hooks Grigory Novakovsky in a huge crash for Novakovsky as he spins down the back straightway wildly. And there's Chester Benson and Lewis Jones as that is has dealt massive damage to the 49. We have no word on his medical condition as he hit the Armco at 250 miles per hour. I have no idea if Novakovsky is alive right now, but that was just a brutal hit for that car. Despite many driver protests to end the race and cancel it, wipe it from the schedule, PCC Cup officials ordered the drivers to restart their engines after the red flag. Ian Elias continues to lead. Dan Foray has moved his way up into sixth place on the restart here. He's being tailed by Bobby Dollar and Flint Stoneman. Excellent runs for all three of those drivers as they work their way towards the front. Good work for all three of them. Preston Bell has opened up a pretty big lead over Ian Elias and Claire Ossier back there. And Preston Bell, well, the Tonaires here have been quite fast. Chris Benson and Barry Juveno are running, well have been running near the top 10 all race. They fell back after doing some pit stops on that uh, last caution. And here is Joe Craig, who's moved his way up into the lead. His teammate, uh, Gaspar D'Souza, is back there. He just switched lanes to the bottom as Brian Gallagher makes a charge towards the front. Flint Stoneman has worked his way up into the top ten. I mentioned him before. Tom Delgado being in this race, I guess, has motivated him to try and outperform him, which he has done for the majority of the race. Flint Stoneman is working on passing Edward Carroll for the ninth position. Now back here we've got Chris Winter running in the 56. He's thoroughly thrashed his teammate in the points and he's running 10th in points coming into this event and he's looking for another good run here today. John Kirkpatrick is going two laps down now. I'm surprised this team hasn't been parked because he's been responsible for, well, Azaretto and Marshall crashing out and kind of indirectly responsible for putting Novakovsky in the position he was. Here's Ryan Jeffries who refused to sign an autograph for a young fan earlier in the week and uh, that surrounded him in a bit of controversy and established him as not really so much of a friendly guy but that doesn't affect how he's driving on the racetrack as he leads over Joe Craig who would promptly take it back a lap later. He is being followed by his teammate Gaspar D'Souza and uh, didn't we see something like this last year with uh, Craig and his teammate 
Jean-Francois de Villar, I think that was his name, uh, at Daytona. Regardless, he takes the lead. Here's Andy Lambert racing with Nicholas Corradovos for the 10th position. He's doing an excellent job considering he nearly lost the draft earlier in the race and had to use the champion's provisional to even get into this race. Also having a good run is the 66 of Barton Sandy, who is also losing the draft near the beginning. He's had a few uh, decent runs, and he's looking for a really good run here because he's currently 29th in standings, tied with Robert Nelson for that final position, another native Aussie. So uh, the two Aussies take up the final uh, two spots in the top 30 in owner points. Caution three on lap 56. Barton Sandy, Edward Carroll, Ben Worthington running the high line. They turn each other. Ben Worthington hits the wall really hard. He's done. Edward Carroll continues on, and there's smoke up ahead from Preston Bell and Clara Kindall involved. Early at domination proves to be nothing as Preston Bell hits the apron and slides up into Clara Kindall. Both cars go into the wall. However, both would continue on, albeit pretty heavily damaged. Joe Craig leads on the restart. He had a win stolen from him last week because of a lapped car, and he's got a lapped car right in front of him. Robert Nelson was allowed to start on the tail end of the lead lap for some reason, but he's got Ryan Jeffries, who actually missed last week's race right behind him, and Greg Woodard as well, who missed that race, having an awesome run in that Terra Motorsports car. And, and Joe Craig has to pit for some reason. It appears he's got some right side damage, and that car wasn't handling right. You see right there he's got some right side damage. Caution four on lap 62 as a result of the stack up from him pitting. Craig Yonser tries to make a move down the track. Cameron Taylor's there and he slides up into Chris Benson and slides back down the track and catches the opening in the wall. And that's going to rip off the rear end of that car and he's going to retire from the race from a punctured fuel tank. And he can't get that car refired. We'll see another view right here. He slides up the track. There's Chris Benson. And he's lucky that he didn't hit that at a more direct angle because that would have been an injury, no doubt. Restart in lap 67, Sam Brown leads, Ryan Jeffries in second, Ian Elias third, Dan Foray running a strong fourth, Barton Sandy rounds out your top five, Robert Nelson got lapped under that last green flag run, including Joe Craig on the bottom there, tough break for him. Tom Delgado is working his way up through the field, he's pushing Flint Stoneman, his teammate, or I guess he decides to pass him, but Tom Delgado is having a strong run late in the going, he is moving towards the front at this point, Sam Brown being hounded by Brian Gallagher for the top spot. Joe Craig, apparently that damage wasn't affecting him too much because he's running there third in line, but Brian Gallagher having a really strong run late in the going. He is hounding Sam Brown for that position. He just doesn't have quite the momentum to get by. Here are two lapped cars to ruin the fun. John Jefferson and Gavin DeGray were damaged in a pit road incident fairly early on. And you see here, they hold up Brian Gallagher in the high lane and Ian Elias putting both of them out of contention for the win. Gallagher and them are screaming over the radio to get them by, and now Preston Bell shows up, and he holds up Sam Brown. Joe Craig makes a run on the inside, and he is going to be able to be the first one to get by, and that'll put him back on the lead lap. Claire Ossier, Dan Foray, and Barry Juveno all get through. Claire Ossier managed to get through, and she leads Dan Foray, who is running a very, very strong second. Barry Juveno running third with Bobby Dollar in fourth place. Bobby Dollar having an excellent run here. He doesn't have quite the momentum to catch up to the leaders, but if he holds position, this is going to be a phenomenal run for this team. They don't have sponsorship, but I think that they might get some after this in, uh, impressive performance, to say the least. Here is Dan Frey, two laps to go. He's looking to the inside here, but Claire Ossier fakes him out. Ossier fakes him out, and he holds the position setting her up for another pass here coming onto the back straightaway you see there Bobby Dollar has relegated himself back to fifth here we go two laps to go coming into turn three but Claire Ossier fakes out fakes out Dan Foray Dan Foray falls back to third place Barry Juvenile takes over second let's see what he can do here coming to the final lap final lap starts now Claire Ossier running in first place Barry Juvenile looks to the bottom Barry Juvenile will take the lead coming into turn two. Can Claire Ossier do anything about it? I don't think so. Barry Juvenile is pulling out to a pretty good lead here with uh, some drafting help from Joe Craig. Coming into turn three, Claire Ossier appears to drop back. So it's all Barry Juvenile coming out of turn four and to the checkered flag. Barry Juvenile wins his first race of the season at New York Auto Ring. 
clear off. Sierra managed to finish second. Dan Ferre, an excellent run from him in third place. Sam Brown recovered after getting trapped behind lapped cars to finish fourth. Ryan Jeffries misses last week, gets a top five. Bobby Dollar, great run for him in sixth place. Flint Stoneman, same for him in seventh. Chris Benson, another good run in eighth place. Greg Woodard makes sure both Terra International Motorsports cars finish in the top 10. And after a very quiet run, Nicholas Korodovos rounds out the top 10. However, we're very worried about his teammate Grigory Novakovsky after that very, very horrendous incident involving him and Ben Worthington. And, uh, well, keep him in your thoughts as well as Frank Gazzaretto and Josh Marshall as we go on to our next race at Carbondale two weeks from now.